Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Getting into the week ahead, uh, 16th of October, uh, that's the Monday matter of fact, but um, Sunday night open uh, is the 15th. So it says in the United States, uh, investors will be paying attention to Fed speeches and data including retail sales, building permits, uh, housing starts, existing home sales and industrial production at all really uh, contributes to the GDP picture. Um, internationally, inflation rates will be closely monitored in the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan and New Zealand. And um, the higher inflation goes or the stickier inflation is, is the more likely that central banks will uh, likely to hike rates, right? And to try and get inflation down to their 2% target. So inflation is going to be very important this week for those uh, for those countries. China will grab attention with its uh, quarter three GDP growth rate, retail sales and industrial production, fixed asset investment, unemployment rate and house price index. And again, looking at China, although don't I don't really trade the uh, Chinese yuan, it's good to look at uh, the uh, Chinese economy and the currency uh, to see how they're doing because if China grow then in fact it affects a lot of currencies commodity currencies like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar as they benefit from um, from China's growth due to uh, them being uh, you know really uh, good and the biggest trade partners so uh, keep an eye on China for risk sentiment um, and uh, global growth is uh, is important and finally the united kingdom will release uh, unemployment rate and retail sales figures and germany will release the zew economic sentiment and that's all from tradingeconomics.com you can get a detailed um, breakdown if you go to their uh, their website and uh, click on the week ahead uh, tab now for those of you who are in the um Discord group. Just a quick reminder that if you go to the um, the trading videos channel, uh, there's a link in there which takes you to this channel here, which has all the private members' videos, and you can watch a detailed breakdown of the fundamental analysis, uh, the uh, weekly technical analysis of the trades that I'm looking at, um, as well as the weekly uh, videos. Also, as well for those of you watching on YouTube. Um, I will be uh, posting this video, which I thought was a uh, really good trade setup. I posted it to the group on the 12th of October, and you can see how I broke down uh, this trade using a method called Capture Pain Relief. So getting into the, and that'll be, by, by the way, that'll be posted after this video. So after this analysis, and then you'll get the, uh, the second video. So keep watching. So yeah. Um, going into some of the technicals and some more fundamentals. So what happened this week technically on the dollar index, um, and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength uh, against the basket of currencies like the euro, the yen, and the pound. And uh, last week I was saying that, um, you know, this area here was gonna be a decent area to look for a uh, uh, look for a buy trade um, confluence. Uh, you can see where you have demand, not only demand, but you also have an area of a horizontal uh, uh, resistance turn to support. And I was saying the two areas that we were looking for was either gonna be at this area here or, you know, pretty further down in that demand zone. And it turned out that in fact, um, the, US um, CPI data came out um, uh, better than expected. So uh, core CPI up um, in uh, 0.3 in September, headline gauge advances 0.4% and data underscore Fed intent to keep rates high and curb inflation is their headline. So US consumer prices advanced at a brisk pace for the second month, reinforcing the Fed's uh, Federal Reserve's intent to keep interest rates high and bring down inflation. So um, if we go to the CME FedWatch tool, um, which um, basically gives you the likelihood that the Fed will change its interest rate at upcoming FOMC meetings according to interest rate traders. Um, November does look like pretty much a done deal in terms of a no change, right? So 93% will be no change. But it's really December that um, is, is, is the... Uh, 
the date that you want to look towards in terms of uh, rate hikes. So if rate hikes um, start to increase or the probability of rate hikes start to increase, then you can see, you're likely to see the uh, dollar start to um, increase um, in an, an appreciation, right? Increase in value as the market starts to price in uh, a rate hike. But also what is supporting the uh, the dollar in a risk off environment is that uh, is an overall risk off um, sentiment in that you know the wider war in the Middle East could tip the world economy into a recession and so um, it's really sad what's happening um, in in Palestine and uh, just pray for uh, for peace and um, uh, the Hamas attack and Israel response um, are taking a heavy human toll. A global economic downturn may follow, and then you know, global economic downturn uh, that is more of a risk off environment. And in a risk off environment, the US economy, in fact, is seen as um, a bit of a safe haven, like the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. But more, I would say, more so at the moment, the, uh, the US and the Swiss franc. Uh, because their economies and uh, are holding up a, a lot better also as well you're getting better yield uh, if you hold a dollar and uh, treasury bonds so um, lots of things supporting a buy on the dollar at the moment um, to continue dollar uh, buys I think anything any anything on a pullback should be a thing of buy and that's my bias anyway of course this isn't financial advice but um, overall my bias is still to go long on the dollar even on pullbacks if it breaks below that level I'd be looking at long trades as long as the data supports the narrative um the dollar yen um at the moment obviously the fed uh hold in november hike in december potentially um and higher for longer rates which supports the uh the dollar but the bank of japan intervention uh support at 150 now what was interesting is that last week we did get um, some sort of intervention or there was definitely a, a massive sell-off last week but um or the week before last sorry but um uh, when it comes to um, the yen going higher potentially, top forecaster Mizuho sees yen tumbling even further in 2024. So Japanese currency may weaken to 155 by the end of March, Applet says, and yen to slip as Fed sticks to higher for longer rates, Mizuho. So the yen is barreling towards its weakest level in more than 30 years as the Bank of Japan holds firmly to its uh, stimulative monetary policy stance according to the currency's most accurate forecaster. And so I'll just read this as well. Uh, Garth Applet, uh, the head of foreign exchange at Mizuho Americas expects the yen to slide to as weak as 155 against the US dollar in the first quarter of 2024 as Japanese uh, policymakers insist on keeping their policy loose. It will likely take a shift by peers at the Federal Reserve and the weaker dollar, he said, to finally stop the yen's slump. So uh, 155 is a good uh, 500 pips uh, to the upside. Uh, how true that is, I don't know, but uh, or whether that's accurate, but I can see the case for it. The reason why is because uh, Japanese producer inflation slides below later CPI gauge. And so in order for the uh, Bank of Japan to really kind of um, uh, adjust monetary policy, inflation, high inflation has to be sustained in terms of um you know, above their 2% target uh, for, a, for a longer period of time and also has to be kind of rising. Now, the Bank of Japan are li more likely to sit on their hands if inflation measures are not supporting rate hikes. And so the pace of gains in Japan's producer prices decelerated more than expected in September, falling below the latest consumer inflation reading for the first time since early 2021, supporting the central bank's view that important, sorry, import-driven price pressures is moderating. So the measure of input price for Japan firms rose 2% from a year earlier, the slowest reading since March 2021. The Bank of Japan reported Thursday that data compared with economists' expectation of 2.4% gain from the prior month. Prices fell 0.3% versus the consensus of a 0.1% gain. And so the Bank of Japan are likely to sit on their hands because inflation really isn't an issue, which therefore you can start to see why the top forecaster Mizuho is saying that in fact the yen could get weaker. Um, of course, 
there is uh, the Bank of Japan and the Ministry of Finance may still start to defend certain levels because they don't want the yen to get weaker or maybe they do in order to get inflation up. But ultimately, um, the yen is going to be a really tricky um, uh, trade at the moment because nobody knows what the Bank of Japan may do at any time. And they've been known to kind of shock the market. So although we may get to 151s, 152s, um, you may get all of a sudden a massive move, you know, two, three hundred pip move in one, you know, in maybe a, a half an hour, an hour period based on the Bank of Japan wanting to kind of defend certain levels. So just I would say definitely be very cautious uh, on 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 um, on selling the yen at these levels. Um, but also if I was looking to buy this. Uh, I would really wait for deeper pullbacks, you know, to the 148s, maybe 147s, somewhere around here to start to look for some potential buys uh, on the dollar if you're looking to buy the uh, dollar yen. I think there are better dollar trades out there, though. But, um, yeah, we could see that start to come to fruition. Uh, 155s, wouldn't that be something? So moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss. Um, this was a decent trade uh, earlier in the week. And again, uh, after this video, immediately after this video, I'll, I'll go over basically a level that I went, um, a trade that I ended up taking um, on the on the dollar Swiss, which is a profitable trade. And um, and yeah, so, but I did get out because I understood that the Swiss franc, uh, the dollar appreciating against, appreciating against the Swiss franc uh, was less likely to happen because of the fact that, um, oh, sorry, one second, what's going on here? Right, because of the fact that um, the Swiss franc is also a risk off uh, currency, and so when you've got two risk off currencies, um, you know, competing, then the upside or downside potential is kind of limited. You know, you've got a fair fight, so. Um, you know, it's likely that the uh, prices won't necessarily trend. So I got out at the right time towards these highs, uh, um, and it was a nice, nice, uh, nice trade. But uh, and that will be explained uh, at the end of this video. But going forward, I do think that the Swiss franc at the moment might be one of the beneficiaries, or is the beneficiary of a risk-off environment. So we could see prices come down a bit more into these zones before a bit of a buy or we could see prices start to move higher. Either way, um, this really isn't a trade I would look to take anymore uh, because of risk off. It's a harder uh, trade to kind of uh, fundamentally to kind of distinguish between the two. Um, and so when there's more risk on, or if there's a, you know, a ceasefire or um, you know more positive sentiment, I think the dollar most definitely would be the you know, buy against the Swiss franc. But at the moment, it's a very, very tough trade to take. But those are your options. If you do want to get short, then you're looking at, um, in fact, I would say this area here in order to look for a uh, short trade. That's supply zone right around uh, these highs at the uh, 0 0.918 area is the first area to look for any kind of short trades. Uh, dollar CAD, uh, again, in the risk off environment, uh, you would expect the dollar, the US dollar to uh, appreciate, of course. Um, the Canadian dollar does have um, oil prices going in its favor, but ultimately as a commodity currency, you would think that the uh, the dollar, US dollar would be the one that appreciates the, the most. Um, again, not really a pair that I'm interested in. There is some demand here as well, right there, um, that you can possibly take advantage of if prices do come back down into that area there, or if you're looking at deeper pullback down into that zone right there. You do have some horizontal uh, support and resistance at the top of that zone as well. Um, a decent area to look for the potential for a, uh, a bounce within that on the top end of that demand zone. But again, not really a pair that I'm personally interested in. If you do want to get short, then um, you're looking at a pullback into these uh, highs and then looking for a uh, sell off. And you know, you're thinking that obviously the uh, the, the the Canadian dollar is going to be a bit more expensive or appreciate against the uh, the US dollar. I don't know how that's going to happen, but anything can happen. 
the uh, New Zealand dollar. So the New Zealand dollar, um, again, prices came up to a really nice area of supply. Again, you had confluence of horizontal support and resistance, nice supply zone. Prices pull back to that market high, really nice sell off. So um, this is also partly due to um, New Zealand elections. And so um, we are now at the bottom end of this this area. Um, I was reading that the elections don't necessarily or haven't historically had a major effect on um, the New Zealand price. I think what is going to affect the New Zealand price um, is the uh, is inflation. Now, if inflation comes out higher than expected or, or, or at expected, I do think that in fact the New Zealand dollar could be a buy, but not necessarily against the uh, US dollar in the risk off environment, maybe against another currency. But um, the uh, the New Zealand dollar, I think, is turning out there's an opportunity to, uh, for it to be a buy, but just not on this uh, not on this pair. I wouldn't buy the New Zealand dollar against uh, the US dollar. But if you are looking to buy, then you're down into a decent area of the demand uh, market lows which you know potentially is a is a bargain there is a bargain around this this uh, this price zone here it was a bargain again although um, again depends on risk off sentiment and whether the market thinks that this would be a bargain I personally don't think so any pullbacks I think are shorting opportunities so again we can move this uh, supply zone really up to here so I think any pullbacks into those uh, uh, 60 cent areas, I think a nice short in opportunities. Uh, the pound dollar, and again, the pound dollar, uh, with the good news coming out, uh, say good news, but the, um, the higher inflation news coming out on the dollar, we did see a move past the supply zone, but then prices, you know, shot to the downside. So um, if this continues and the risk off environment continues, any pullbacks up into that zone are decent but going to the uh, the pound they did have some okay news but overall it's not looking positive for the uh, for the uk it says uk stagnation fears persist despite late summer economic rebound so strikes abated during august boosting health and education figures leave question marks over third quarter as a whole so uk economic growth remained weak in august as a modest rebound from a strike afflicted July failed to ease concerns that output which output would shrink in the third quarter gross domestic product rose 0.2% following a revised 0.6% uh, contraction in July the office of national statistics said Thursday economists had expected a growth of 0.2% so it came out as expected um, and although the uh, the UK economy uh, in August was 2.1% bigger than uh, before in COVID, it says here that the figures reinforce a picture of an economy losing steam in the face of a sharp increase in borrowing costs. The Bank of England held rates last month, fueling speculation that the most um, that the most aggressive hiking cycle since the late 1980s may have come to an end. And so uh, they're likely to hold the Bank of England. The Fed could continue to, to hike depending on the inflation. Um, and of course, the Bank of England could also start to um, hike based on inflation again. But um, it looks like at the moment, until that data does support that narrative, the path of least resistance is to the downside. So yeah, I think any pullbacks into that supply zone are decent uh, buy trades. Uh, looking at the pound, sorry, buy trades for the uh, for the dollar, uh, sell trades for the uh, for the uh, pound. Of course, you do have an area around here. Just quickly, just to finish up the analysis. Uh, there is an area of demand right here that you can get involved in if you feel that the uh, there's a buying opportunity and you want to be a buyer of the pound maybe some positive news out of the uh, the UK and maybe some negative news out of uh, out of the um, the US right that's a decent area and if you're in that trade short you can always look to take profits somewhere around these lows I wouldn't say at the low somewhere around these lows maybe 78 percent of the uh, of the range or the auction pound yen so pound yen prices did come back down to this area here and um, ended up bouncing off it uh, the last uh, couple of weeks now we do have a move back up into this area here and we've uh, managed to sell off uh, from from uh, from last week risk off sentiment now definitely coming into uh, the market so I do believe that the path of least resistance is to the downside uh, buying the yen uh, on a risk off Although uh, the yen um, fundamentally isn't the greatest, but if you're buying um, risk off sentiment, I do think that the um, that the uh, um, 
this should should be a sell. But again, it's a very difficult um, trade, I think, at the moment to buy the uh, yen. There are definitely better uh, risk off um, trades um, or pairs to kind of look towards. Like for example, like the pound Swiss would be a would be a better trade, I think, um, in terms of a risk off uh, trade. So a pound Swiss short. But if you do, oh, do want to buy the uh, the yen against the British pound, I think the you know any pullbacks up into these areas here are decent for a short trade. From a buy trade perspective, if uh, risk on does come back into the market and you're looking at you know that area there, and even maybe some of these lows around uh, here would be decent. Let me just see if there's any confluence. Doesn't look like it. No short term confluence, but um, there is an area of. Looks like an area of support in there, in that wide zone of demand. So those are really the two areas you would look towards buying the pound against the yen, euro, dollar. So euro, dollar, this was a nice trade. Got in, managed to get in short up at these highs um, based on the uh, the news that came out with inflation. So um, yeah, the, uh, the euro at the moment not looking great. Um, Christine Lagarde does sound hawkish. The... Uh, the uh, ECB um, president, so the guard says ECB can act again as rate impact impact gauged. So president speaks on panel at IMF meetings in Marrakesh. Uh, comments are among the last from the guard before the decision. So uh, the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde said officials will raise interest rates again if they have to. So that's very hawkish. I think they jawboning. Jawboning is just trying to support the euro and trying to persuade the market that the euro isn't as weak as it actually is. Uh, but they are gauging the impact of prior moves still feeding through. So they, they need to wait and see what the effect of the interest rate hikes are in uh, uh on the economy right and so um we do have uh this as well from pound sterling live germany to suffer double dip recession um and this is deutsche bank so germany's largest bank says the domestic economy is set to suffer a double dip recession sparking a negative feedback loop which will wait on activity in 2024 ensuring the uk france and us and italy will all grow faster so deutsche bank says double dip recession is likely uh, with a hard and soft data pointing to a GDP contraction of about 0.3% in the third quarter. Why is that important? Uh, because Germany is Europe's economic um, engine, basically the biggest economy in Europe. And if uh, you, uh, Germany go into a recession, then it kind of drags everybody else down in, in Europe's um Europe's the eurozone economy down. Um, so uh, you know it's 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 all good. Christine Lagarde um, being uh, quite hawkish, but at the same time, um, it's it's very difficult for them to hike or continue to hike uh, in a recession. And if Germany are seen as going into a recession, then they could make that recession worse. And so um, I do think that the euro is a continued sell. It's definitely a continued sell um, against the US dollar at the moment, unless obviously the data proves otherwise. So I think any pullbacks into uh, this this area here, I think is gonna be a really nice uh, short trade or um, just a bit higher, of course, that'd be a really nice zone into the 106s, 107s. Let's see what happens there. Um, if you're looking to take profit, then uh, definitely looking at these areas around here lows of these areas i did actually take profit um already on this um this was due to a bit of a cpr zone um occurring right here so managed to actually pick these lows off decent risk reward so i'm out of that trade at the moment um but if you are in this trade short you know definitely consider taking um some profit somewhere around these lows if you are continuing to um or at least partial profits and get yourself to a break even or profitable position then you can let maybe a little bit run if you feel you know very confident that the um the uh, the, the dollar will you know move past this 104 i personally think that it may not but if it does then brilliant then i'll just wait for a pullback to get involved in the uh, in, in another short trade uh, euro yen and euro yen again um, this week risk off didn't really kick in until probably Thursday Friday so um, as uh, things escalate in um, with uh, Israel and uh, Palestine <clears throat> and so 
we've come up to this area here that we've sold off. So I do think um, if you are playing the risk off um, theme, then I think any pullbacks or even a trade right now could push prices um, to more further to the downside if uh, risk off does escalate. Um, even in a risk on environment, it's difficult to buy the euro to be fair. But uh, I would think that for me, price this should be the cap. The one five nine, one sixty area should be the cap for this um, for this pair. Um, uh, uh, fundamentally, I'm, I'm I'm more buying. I'm on, my bias is more to buy the Japanese yen um, over the euro um, in a risk off environment. And even in a risk on environment, I think the uh, the yen. If we push past that um, one fifty area on the dollar yen, then and we're up here then this could uh, benefit from some sort of intervention short. So uh, there's that pound, uh, euro pound, uh, prices did come back down to this uh, this demand zone, bounced off it once, bounced off it twice. Both um, central banks, again, are really kind of on that hold uh, data dependent. It's difficult to see really the difference between the two um, in terms of uh, clear divergence. So for me, I'm staying out of this pair, but if you do want to get involved in it, I do think that um, extreme highs and extreme lows are probably the best um, areas to look for any kind of buy or sell trades. Extreme highs meaning anything but into this uh, supply zone here, and extreme lows probably down into these uh, this way down into that uh, fifty maybe sorry eighty five cent area on the extreme lows. As this, if you're looking at this as uh, as a range or an auction, as I typically do, then. Um, you know, we're looking at premiums and discounts. So uh, the high end of this uh, this auction is where the pound is seen as being a bargain, right? So it's a bargain here because you know there's a bargain here. As price is pushed all the way down, and you can see at the bottom end, you can see that the euro was seen as a bargain, right? It's a bargain at this price, bargain at this price, bargain at this price. So. <clears throat> Depending on you know which one you want to buy or sell, the, uh, the the value really is up at these highs or down at these lows. But uh, again, not really a pair that I'm interested in trading. But you do have these demand zones that you can look to buy, uh, and supply zones that you can wish to sell if you can figure out which one is the uh, stronger. Now, uh, Aussie dollar again in the risk off environment, the US dollar should uh, you know reign supreme. And uh, you can see what's happening here, especially with China not performing as well. The Australian dollar um, has been a bit on the weak side. So prices pulled back to the supply zone and then pretty much sold off. And so um, I think, again, the path of this resistance should continue to the downside. You know, so any pullbacks up into that zone um, or even further, a better price to kind of short would be above these areas here. I think a fresher area of supply. But um, if you are looking for any kind of buy trades, um, I think now is probably the time, or actually, in fact, maybe if, if you go further down into uh, the range from around maybe the 61s, you may, might, may start to look for a uh, buy trade. But if you're looking for a buy trade anywhere around there, I think you'd have to have China data or Chinese data in terms of you know the economy and, and looking to grow so um, I wouldn't necessarily take this long unless I saw some data uh, uh, proving that the uh, the Chinese economy is growing and then that should support the Australian dollar um, Aussie yen uh, there is obviously the risk on risk off dynamic in play so you've got an area of uh, supply there and then you've got some demand I think all the way down here so from a supply demand perspective um, again risk on risk off you're probably looking at some more risk off so any pullbacks I think to especially this area here Pencil right here. I think any pullbacks into this zone or into this area here, I think are definitely short trades. In order for this to kind of turn around, you'd have to be very bullish on the uh, from a risk sentiment perspective, or um, or just on the Australian dollar. So um, I think there's opportunities to buy or sell, but um, a very I think a, quite a tricky trade to be fair 
to look for um, for to look for any kind of um, trades to long or short side at the moment. I think if you're looking for any trades, I think it might be down into these extremes for a buy and up into these extremes for a, uh, a short trade. Risk off at the moment though should favour the um, the Japanese yen over the uh, Australian dollar though. So any pullbacks um, are shorting opportunities. And finally, gold. Gold <clears throat> breaking through this level on Friday as, uh, again, uh, things have uh, escalated and tensions have gotten worse. And gold gains as attack on Israel bolsters metal safe haven status. So risk aversion takes hold as markets brace for volatility. Gold options uh, volatility call skew also climb on Monday. So um, there we are. It's um, Gold is uh, seen now as a uh, safe haven. And so, again, I always say this, there's no supply or demand zone. There's no technical analysis that's going to work in the face of uh, fundamentals and risk sentiment. As fundamentals and risk sentiment is really what is driving price. And so, um, you know, you can uh, trade whatever technical strategy you want. But if you're not aware of what's going on behind the scenes, you're going to constantly make you know the wrong decisions. So I think in a risk off environment, Gold should be the buy. Don't know whether prices will pull back to any of these levels, but um, if it does, I think, and risk is continued to stay off, then that's going to be quite nice. Um, if you are shorting the um, the dollar, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the gold for, for whatever reason, I mean, there are going to be opportunities to short gold, of course, because on Monday we could have uh, de-escalation intentions, right? And so, you know, risk on could come back into the market and then you could get a, <clears throat> a short trade. Now we did have a bit of a discussion um, in the uh, in the group in terms of gold and the dollar going higher, right? And um, typically we do see um, gold and the dollar work inversely, but there are periods of time, and this is what you have to be aware of. And um, you know things aren't always set in stone, and this is where I think a lot of traders um, trip themselves up when it comes to things like fundamental analysis. Is that yes, things are correlated, but you have to be aware of when they're not correlated. So, for example, the reason why gold is up, we know, is that there's uh, risk sentiment uh, is off, right? And so you know money typically flows into a safe haven, um, uh, safe haven assets, right? And gold and silver being one of them, right? But but there's also investors. The investors are not necessarily always going to say, well, I'm going to buy gold and then um, not buy dollars. Dollar, the, the, the US dollar is also a safe haven, considered a safe haven currency, but it also a safe haven currency that pays a yield. And so is treasury bonds as well. So um, US treasury bonds are paying uh, a yield. And so um, some investors will say they'll put their money into gold, which drives demand. And some investors will say, well, they want to put their prefer to put their money into the US dollar, which not only is a safe haven um, currency, um, it also returns a yield. But either way, both can rise at the same time. It's not one has to rise, so I'm going to short the other. So if you're, tra if you're a trader of gold, you know, um, you have to look at these things and you can't always say, all right, well, um, gold should be going, uh, the US dollar should be going down now because gold has gone up so much. No, it doesn't work like that. It's all about um, understanding the correlations um, and, and uh, how um, investors think about these things. So uh, there are periods of time where gold and the dollar will um, both go, uh, are both likely to go higher. And this is um, one of those um uh, this is one of those situations where you can see both going higher. I'm not saying that they are both going to go higher. I'm just saying that um, if you thought that the dollar should go down because you saw this large uh, bullish candle, it's not always the case. Anyways, um, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Um, thanks for your comments as well. And after this video, you'll see a breakdown of a trade that I took on the dollar Swiss. Hope you have a great week and uh, speak to you all soon. Hi everyone, I uh, just thought I would go over a trade setup and um, I just kind of noticed this as I was looking for uh, dollar buys potentially today, of course nobody knows. We've got uh, CPI data out today, so inflation uh, year on year, uh, core inflation as well. Everything is you know kind of expected to actually come 
down. So um, what does that mean? I think if it comes out as expected, um, then the market has really kind of priced that in. So I don't really expect uh, prices to really kind of move, you know, you know, too far to the downside in terms of, um, you know, a, a much weaker dollar because <clears throat> the numbers are actually, you know, already uh, known in a sense. Um, but of course, anything can happen and, you know, it can, you know, prices can move to the downside, right? But I think if the, if, if the data comes out and it is, you know, maybe, you know, some of these are maybe slightly better than expected, a um, bit more stickier, for example, then, um, you know, the dollar, I think, can be uh, supported. Now, from a technical analysis perspective, um, we have uh, a CPR. And it's a bit of an unusual one, or uh, I would say unusual, but it's a, um, a rarer one where we have uh, on the 21st of sep sorry, September, we had um, the, uh, the Swiss National Bank come out and basically hold rates, right? They held rates and then you had, a, uh, um, and it was, they were expected to hike, right? So uh, the market kind of went to the upside and it would have caught traders going short at this area. Why? Because if we zoom out a little bit more, this level, I think, yeah, would have been, this area would have been a level that traders probably would have been looking for short trades uh, and the catalyst would have been something like the, um, let me just do that. I'm just going to turn off this magnet. Um, so it would have been something like this, right? And it would have been around that area there where price, where traders would have been looking at price, a level, level, and then, you know, a move up to that zone there and it starts to sell off before the news. That would have been a nice area to look for some short trades in anticipation of a rate hike, but they, they held rates, right? So it's traders that would have been caught going short in this price action, but then obviously it goes the other way. So now as prices start to come back, um, you know, through supply and demand equation in terms of, you know, traders went short here, then they're going to have to basically go long um, and to exit their trade. It's a, it's a buy order. They have to um, press in order to exit their trade. And they could have been exiting around here as well, anywhere around these areas. Um, it adds to the demand equation in and around here. There's new traders potentially getting long at a level of support and resistance, which has got resistance, resistance, you know, support there, support, it looks like it's bouncing off there. Um, and you've got traders taking profit, right, at areas. So if they got short anywhere around these areas, then they're looking to take profit at, at an area where there would have been strong demand or at least um, a, a big bounce from that area, right? So, um from a technical analysis view, I like it. The um, the final really key to the puzzle is going to be today's news, which is going to be CPI. And so, CPI um, uh, will determine whether uh, the dollar does um, either you know move to the upside or you know maybe even move sideways or, or continue going lower. Um, so what do you do right now? So you can look for uh, an entry candle at the moment. I don't see one, not on that one hour, nothing on the two hour yet. There's nothing um, yet as of yet um, on, on any of the time frames that I'm looking at in terms of uh, an entry candle. So I'm just waiting, just waiting. And then um, if there is an entry candle before the news, then I might take a small position um, in anticipation of there being decent news or supportive news news for the dollar. Of course, I have no idea. It could be a losing trade. I've um, you know uh, accepted the risk. Um, but if it's obviously um, if it's supportive for the dollar, then this is going to be a really good trade, a very good entry, and we should see at least a decent upside potential um, in terms of you know risk reward. But the first thing I have to see is an entry. Um, on um, you know some of the time frames that I'm looking at these time frames up top and if that doesn't happen beforehand then of course uh, we'd have to wait for an entry after the fact and that will give us a, 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 a I wouldn't I wouldn't say a worse entry I don't use the word worse but uh, more of an expensive entry if it's supportive of course um, of of the uh, the data but um, hopefully it should continue to the upside also as well this. This area here, and if you zoom out on the daily, we've got some um, 
a decent area of that has been traded from a support and resistance perspective. So daily resistance there turning into some daily, the potential for daily support in this area as well. So we've got an intraday CPR, daily support. We've got some uh, demand zones just below it. So I think the dollar has had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, uh, uh, bearish days or you know uh, uh, lower closes. Um, typically, when you get into the realm of like seven, eight, nine closes, uh, bearish closes, you should at least get some sort of positive uh, move. Kind of just from a, from a candlestick count perspective, and um, yeah, let's see what happens. Right, nobody knows, but the setup is there. The setups are there. The levels there. Um, is 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 this potentially you know a decent area to look for uh, some long trades and buy the dollar? I think so. There's enough. There's no reason really to buy the Swiss other than <clears throat> it really acting as a a level of um, support. Uh, sorry, a uh, a. Uh, 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 a risk off currency so and we haven't really seen too much risk off in in terms of um how it's playing out in the forex market um from the um israel and palestine conflict it hasn't really played itself out <coughs> too much so um or been evident in the market also as well we're at the 90 uh, cent round number as well so in and around these round numbers is is, is key as well can be can be key so uh, the only really rise reason why you buy the Swiss franc is because of risk off. But even then, if you're buying, even if, even if you're buying a Swiss franc, um, you would really want to buy on a pullback, right? If you really believe in risk off and you want to be short on the dollar, you wouldn't necessarily be selling um, in the round here. So I think um, technically all signs point to um, a potential uh, uh, buy on the dollar, but that's going to, you know, the CPI is going to be key. Um, and obviously an entry as well is going to be key to this trade. All right, guys, take care and speak to you all soon.